Carol Matesi, also known as Charlotte Angie, was killed January 10th, 2022 in the Lombardy metropolitan area in the city of Milan, Italy, by her ex and neighbor, David Fontana. She was a loving mother who enjoyed spending time with her family and friends. In March of 2022, Charlotte's peers and friends began to grow weary when she didn't show up to a dancing event where she had been in contact with her friends via WhatsApp with Pryor. Her body was later found by a passerby, but was later identified by a fan who knew all of her tattoos. Did jealousy drive David Fontana to murder Carol Matesi? Or was this a case of extreme BDSM gone entirely too wrong? Hey, word on the street, I'm a suspect. suspect. Hanging with the killers in the projects. Tell one of them, keep quiet. Catch a nigga slipping from behind. Hold you, Bobby. Hey, y'all. Hey. I go by Judy and we are back with a, another SW in true crime video. Hey y'all, welcome back. I just want to thank y'all so much um, for all the support on my heel haul and also the Courtney Clinney case. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check out the cards above and you know, binge watch me. Check out my cases. I have some very, very interesting cases coming up, so I can't wait to share them with y'all, so make sure y'all stay tuned. I just want to give my condolences to the family, and again, I mean absolute no disrespect. This week's case has some mentions of bondage and also extreme violence. If this is something that you do not want to hear at this time, it is more than fine for you to step out and watch another one of my videos. Um, I totally understand. This may be one of the most gruesome cases that I've ever covered. The information I'm about to state is public information and it will all be linked below so you can join the conversation. Again, it is extremely dangerous for everyone, not only S workers. Let's get into the next case. This case takes place in another country, so a lot of the information um, is not really translated well, and also there's not a lot of like really background details on this case. So I did my best. Again, I'm doing a bit more opinionated but yet detailed approach, so let me know what you think in the comments. Carol Matesi was born in 1996 and grew up in Sesto Caliente which is in the province of Ariche, um, I believe that's how you say it, um, which is in the province of Treviso Finito, Northern Italy. I believe I said that correctly, sorry if I didn't. She then moved to Milan, Italy to work. In 2016, she gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, um, and some sources say a daughter, but I believe it could be just a mistranslation. Um, but from some sources, most of the sources, it said she had a son. It seems that her son did live in Roscaldino with a relative or their father. Carol began to work as a sales associate at a perfume boutique but later lost her job um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Like many of us in the industry, um, Carol Matesi decided to join OnlyFans um, where she posted adult videos and photos and went by the stage name Charlotte Angie. I'm not sure the truth to the statement, but in some sources it said that she also liked to dance at um, different nightclubs, um, which honestly probably was just an additional source of income. The direct timeline is a bit unclear, but in October of that year, so 2020, Charlotte Angie met David Fontana. A uh, aspiring adult photographer or just somebody that um, freelance in photography in hopes to get you know more nude photos and lingerie photo sets 
A lot of sources say that the two met on Instagram. Bank employee turned photographer introduced himself to Charlotte as a paying customer and fan in hopes to build her trust um, to get to know her better. But unfortunately, it worked. In the beginning of 2021, Charlotte began having an open romantic relationship with David Fontaine. So you may be asking, or not, who is this David Fontana? Which I'm pretty sure I said Fontaine early, I'm sorry, Fontana. Who is David Fontana? Born in 1979 in Italy, David was a known local banker who had a passion for photography and food blogging. There wasn't honestly much information about his background, but he was married when he met Charlotte Angie. David states, I lived in Milan with my wife, but then I decided to leave her because I started dating Carol. We, meaning David and Carol, were in an open relationship. Ex-wife stated that their marriage ended in about March of 2021 because David felt that he needed more freedom and he eventually admitted that he was actually dating a 25 year old. Some of Charlotte's, okay. Just also a disclaimer, sometimes I say Charlotte, sometimes I say Carol, but these two are indeed the same person. Okay, okay. So some of her close friends, Charlotte's close friends, family, peers, and also her current boyfriend noted of um, her and Fontana's strange relationship. They later found out that Carol was persuaded to move closer or to the same complex as David even after they broke up. But Carol or Charlotte just constantly reassured them that everything was fine and that they're, you know, good friends and also neighbors. All in all, everybody who got to know Charlotte Angie or Carol just immediately fell in love with her infectious spirit. With over 35,000 followers on Instagram and many on OF, Everybody just fell in love with Charlotte's just joyous spirit as well as her beautifully tattooed body. It was early of January 2022. Carol's family and friends will receive the final phone calls, but without them honestly knowing that it would be the last time that they would hear her voice. Out of nowhere, Carol, the person that would honestly call randomly, would just stop. The only communication that her family and friends had with her was from WhatsApp, not from calls, not from voice messages, just text only. Carol Matessi or Charlotte Angie was reported missing in March when she failed to show up for a dancing event. I believe it was the Lucky Erotic Festival in Milan, Italy. Her S worker and dancer peers found this quite odd because they had been communicating with her via WED's app the whole time before the event. It even seemed that she was super excited and anticipating to dance. People began to wonder, was this really Charlotte that was texting them back? On Sunday, March 19th, um, so just to give the reference, I believe the festival was from March 11th to the 13th. So she probably was like reported missing around then. But on Sunday, March 19th, a passerby spotted what it seemed to be a hand with purple glitter nail polish peeking out of a trash bag. When he came to give it a closer look, he ended up finding that it was multiple trash bags alongside of the road in Borno, which is in the province of Brescia, Italy. Sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. When police eventually arrived, they discovered 15 different trash bags with defrosted body parts. Upon further investigation, they seemed to find that these body parts were indeed from a woman's body. However, the woman could not be identified because it had seemed that her face had been completely burned. Police officials found that the body did have indeed seven tattoos that were intact that could help them find who indeed was this Jane Doe. 
They found the words Wanderlust, I believe, on the collarbone or somewhere on the upper body. And also, Elegance is the on the back. Step by Step was on the ankle as well as a few others. The authorities proceeded to try and match the tattoos with any pictures that they had with missing persons reports and they also issued a missing person alert. Miraculously, a journalist named Andrea Tortile, I'm sorry if I'm not saying that correctly, I took Italian classes like back in high school. I don't remember like the like pronunciation, so sorry. Andrea Tortile immediately saw these images and grew weary. It turns out y'all that this journalist was Charlotte Angie's OnlyFans subscriber. Okay, I know I always tell my fans in the Discord, like, ever since I, like, opened up and told my fans that I love true crime, like, I jokingly tell them, like, if something happens to me, y'all, like, I need y'all to ride, but this case is definitely what I mean by that, okay? So, Andrea was the first person to identify Charlotte Angie or Carol after police released her description. Andrea first thought to, you know, sought out to Carol's family to confirm her identity, um, which I don't know how he could have gotten that information. Um, and then he also got her WhatsApp number to talk, to try to talk to her one-on-one -on -one to see if he, you know, could see if that was her or was she still alive? Um, which I also don't know how he could have got that. I feel like he was a pretty good journalist if that was the case. I don't know. After getting plain or just like basic messages back from texting um, Charlotte Angie's WhatsApp number, he asked for a voice message to confirm, you know, if this was her. When that message was not sent, that is when he went to the police with all of his suspicions as well as pictures to say like, I believe that the person you found is Charlotte Angie or Carol. Andrea knew that whoever this person that was texting him back from Charlotte's phone had to be the killer or had to be connected. Y'all, this is the sick part though. This case is so sick, but this is one of the sick parts. So friends texted Carol to, you know, make sure she was okay after the pictures got released. And Carol texted back saying, yeah, they look a lot like mine, but luckily I'm fine. Like, girl, let's be for real, for real. Like, this is no doppel, I can't even say the word, doppelganger situation. Like, I even think they said that, like, sometimes she would respond back to her fans or like the person will respond back to her fans like you're just overreacting because I'm quitting porn which Carol told her family friends and fans that she was actually quitting her lifestyle quitting s work and moving to Dubai she even told them that she barely could talk to them because she was so busy so with all of this information the police have now began to start the investigation on the body of Jane Doe, which is now Carol Motesi. Investigators began to look at David Fontana and brought him in for questioning after some of his statements contradicted himself. Initially, David denied any involvement in her death. After police pressed harder and harder and pointed out the various inconsistencies in his statement, David almost immediately folded and began to tell the events of what happened. According to his account, the murder took place either the morning of the 10th or the 11th of January in 2022. He initially admitted during an interview with NL Times that they were in the process of filming to customs or videos requested by fans when this incident suddenly happened and he called it an incident and kept stressing that it was an accident but this was initially however in all actuality it was not an accident in fact charlotte had planned to record to customs to bdsm customs um for her fan 
um, which she began to set up her tripod and use David's phone for some reason. As I said previously, both of the videos were BDSM related, but the second one was a bit more um, intense than the first. The second one included her being bound and also gagged. I believe the second request or second custom needed to include bondage and breath play. During the filming of the second video, Charlotte got a call from her child's father stating that he had COVID um, and they also got to talk about the child's school and also her plans of possibly moving closer to their child. After the phone call or break, David recalls um, returning to the custom or filming the custom, picking up the phone, having her arms bound to the stripper pole she had in her house um, with a bag over her head and tape on her mouth, which was all for the custom. But then everything changed. According to the Google Translate of the Milano Courier report, David stated, I started hitting her with the hammer all over her body, not hard. This is when I got to her head and I started immediately hitting harder. And I'm not sure why. She seemed dead, but then I thought I saw movement from her leg. So I went to get a kitchen knife and I cut her throat to relieve her suffering. I started dissecting the body a few days later and by I started dissecting the body a few days later after purchasing or buying a hacksaw at Brico, which I'm assuming that's like the local department or hardware store. The horrible encounter was all recorded, but however, deleted after it was played back. I believe in this case, the forensic specialist did in fact recover this gruesome video. David also claimed to brutally SA her before killing her. According to him, he stared at her lifeless body for about 30 minutes before returning to his own home. He then posted it on his Instagram profile, Uma Ala Koke. I'm not sure if that was his um, username. Um, it was his cooking blog with over 13,000 followers. He posted a photo of a freshly cooked dessert with the caption, Today's tasting menu ends with Mazamazu. He told officials that it took him about three to four days to decide overall what he should do next. David later returned to the body and purchased a large freezer from Amazon and then went to his local hardware store to get a hatchet saw in trash bags. After this, he decided to cut up her body and put individual parts in plastic bags to avoid some of her recognizable tattoos from being discovered. David always thinking, so he, you know, thought he could, you know, burn the body easily, you know, and all of this would be wiped away. But he did not know that it took a lot, it takes a lot to burn a human body. So that did not work. Somehow, which I don't know what biology video he was watching or what restoration video he was looking at, but he came up with the bright idea to just put her body parts in the freezer. Let's freeze them. Like, I don't know, was he trying to like freeze the DNA away or maybe like if you just freeze it, it'll be freezer burnt. Like the tattoos would just, you know, vanish. But they say that he could have done this to preserve the body to figure out what to do next. David apparently during this process thought about actually going to the police. He says, I wanted to go there, say that those remains were hers, go home, and then commit suicide. I hate myself for what I did. However, officials say that this could not have been the case because David actually took her cards and proceeded to just buy frivolous things to make it seem like she was still alive. David bought leather shoes, he went to lunch, dinner, paid her bills, and 
make sure her gas was full in her car. Wanted to do this to just keep everybody in the assumption that Carol or Charlotte Angie was alive and well and still, you know, using her bank cards. Like, she's fine. She's still, you know, spending money type of thing. Crazy enough, it just shows like how committed he was to this story. David was actually paying her rent from the time that he committed murder to the time he was found. He was still paying her rent. As stated earlier, he also was keeping up conversations with her phone, making sure he was consistently responding back. Carol's mother stated that every time she tried to call her daughter, it seemed that her daughter's phone was off. Immediately, she would go to WhatsApp to text her to see is everything okay, but she would just get a generated response back. She immediately grew weary. Her father, on the other hand, knew that it was a problem because Carol used to call all the time. And it went from her calling all the time to not calling at all, just texting. Oh, it gets weirder, okay? David also was committed enough to text Carol's current boyfriend and sexed with him to keep up that she was alive, still in love, still heavily infatuated, hot and heavy for her boyfriend. He was texting, acting like it was her. And you may be thinking like, oh my God, like that was her boyfriend, like he, he could have known, but they had a long distance relationship. Her boyfriend, I believe, lived in Holland. So they were, you know, always talking on the phone or like sexting. Um, but again, it does raise like the little suspicion that's like, you know how your partner talks. So I know he kind of had to feel something, you know? Just to let y'all know, a lot of content creators are in relationships where they can work or they work um, and have successful relationships outside of their workplace. It's literally just different strokes for different S work folks. Um, it's subjective and it depends on the person, honestly. So it seems that when all of the talk about Charlotte Angie not showing up to dance at the event, David Fontana grew kind of like nervous he heard all the press he heard her friends and i'm pretty sure he saw the text and he was like oh sh i gotta do something about these body parts so her disappearance from the nightclub is what sparked him to take the bags and disperse them alongside of the road remarks doing this way before the investigation even began but i'm assuming if I get the timeline right, the event was from the 11th to the 13th. Her body was found the 19th. So he had to dump her like probably a week before the investigation began. She had been deceased for two months. So just keep that in mind, okay? Charlotte's or Carol's car, which was a Fiat 500, was found on surveillance footage where the bags were found. Police concluded that whoever was driving the car is also responsible for scattering the bags alongside of the road. But guess who was the only person that had access to her car? Guess. Yep. David Fontaine. David Fontaine was the only person that had access to Charlotte Angie's car at the time. A search of David's home was concluded after the police gathered substantial evidence. They found the exact same garbage bags that Charlotte's body was in in David's residence. They also found Charlotte's DNA. After searching David's home, they began to search Charlotte's. They found the pole that David said that she was tied to. Um, and they also found a very clean apartment. So it seems that David totally cleaned her apartment for evidence, but they did find the large freezer in her house with some of her DNA evidence still residing in it. Before this, police thought that it could have been two suspects because of what David had said about the custom. The custom is what caused everything apparent to him. I don't even wanna say guess. Cause this is, 
this is what made me like drop my jaw. Get into this. It turns out that David Fontana created a fake OF profile and was requesting BDSM customs from Charlotte Angie. So yes, it was indeed David Fontana who requested the two customs she had to make that day. The custom, the extreme BDSM custom. I, I just, okay, let's educate those on people that don't know what BDSM or bondage or breath play is. BDSM, um, according to Webster Dictionary, is a variety of often erotic practices or role playing involving bondage, discipline, dominance, and submission, sadomasochism, which is like inflicting pain, um, and other related interpersonal dynamics. Bondage is a BDSM subculture, it's a practice of consensually. Tying, binding, and restraining a person um, with rope, cuffs, bondage tape, um, or self-binding bondage. The term gagged um, is, in a sense, a term used in like breath play. Breath play, um, the definition for breath play. Breath play involves the restriction of oxygen to increase erotic pleasure or intensify an orgasm or sexual experience. This can either be achieved through solo play or with a partner in which the submissive, or it doesn't have to be the submissive, I don't know why the definition says that, um, but in which the partner you're with or you would like to be asphyxiated. Um, but in these cases, it's always usually with a trusted safe partner and always, always safe words are used. So extreme, you know, danger will not happen. I believe Charlotte Angie and David Fontana um, participated in consensual BDSM. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe that David Fontana is a psychopathic sadomasochist who honestly got off on what he did to Charlotte Angie. BDSM is a very common practice again, and there's nothing wrong um, with being involved in the BDSM community. But however, it has to be with a trusted and educated, educated meaning like on the kink and you know, on what they're doing person. Um, it can't just be, you know, with somebody that has no clue what they're doing because a lot of times people can take things too far and they don't know or they do know and they're trying to take advantage. As I said previously, in a lot of cases, in almost every case, safe words are used. It, it's, it's a must. But in terms of a safe word in this case, David, I don't think, gave Charlotte the opportunity to use it. He took advantage of her in a vulnerable state. David Fontana was finally arrested Tuesday, March 29th, 2022, and charged with aggravated first degree murder, dismemberment, and concealing a corpse. David tried the abbreviated procedure card, which I learned in Italy um, that is basically them speeding up the court trial um, and could possibly lead to them avoiding the risk of life and giving them possibly like a third of the sentence. So I think in like the States, it's like if you, um, you take a plea deal, I'm guessing it's kind of the same thing. I'm not sure, but I assume that it's kind of like a plea deal type of thing. However, being that the charges against him is first degree murder, dismemberment, and concealing a corpse, that is not allowed in the new rule um, of the new abbreviated procedure card. So he, no luck with that. The trial is taking place in the court of Azizis this i'm not sure if that's how you say it um in busto arizio a city in italy 
In the morning of October 24th, 2022, the court proceeded with an open trial. According to what was reconstructed, thanks to the investigators and testimonies of the cabinery, which I'm assuming is like the detectives in the case, they found out that, like I said previously, David Fontaine was indeed the person behind the account that ordered the BDSM customs. Stated in the custom that he wanted her to be bound by her hands, feet, with her mouth tied. Stated that he wanted to make sure to send this a few days before she left for Rascaldina. After the phone call with Carol Child's father, David proceeded to pick up the camera and then film Carol with her hands tied to the stripper pole um, and making sure her mouth was, you know, covered. Everything basically that he said in the custom and like I said previously. The coroner reported, according to the timeline in the courtroom, that Carol was first inflicted with forced blunt trauma to the head and then fatally stabbed or fatally um, cut at the neck. There were also wounds as well as the major forced trauma on her head were seen to have occurred while she was alive. These were evidenced by the hemorrhagic wounds found on her body in the autopsy. Furthermore, the picture of the evidence the coroner showed in the courtroom just gave the overall probability that Carol's cause of death was the lesion to the neck. Pete's defense asked the court if they could possibly rise the hint that he needed to be psychologically evaluated, hinting that in the time of the murder, he was not all the way there psychologically. They also filed a technical consultancy form, which stated that he possibly could have had or have personality disorder, which means that they would prefer he be hospitalized instead of institutionalized. To add, they also requested that the court exclude aggravating circumstances um, that show that it was premeditated, torture, um, and object reasons. For me, that is absurd because the hemorrhagic like marks on her body or like bruises show that she was alive and well when he hit her with the hammer. Like that was still in his testimony when the police interviewed him that he hit her with the hammer and she was alive. And he then decided to slice her neck, which the coroner stated was how she died. So that clearly shows that she was tortured before she died. So I don't get why they thought it was like a good idea to say that they, that they need that to be excluded. But anyway, the judge and police officers decided to close the case and proceed with sentencing and honestly getting the testimonies of some of the witnesses. On December 5th, David Fontana's ex-wife decided to testify to be a witness for the prosecution. Among the witnesses I stated earlier and a good friend of Carol Matesi, which I think she was also and I think she still is an S worker basically referred to David Fontaine as morbidly in love with Charlotte Angie. They also interviewed Carol or Charlotte's current boyfriend, Salvatore Gaudo. He stated that ever since Carol introduced me to David Fontana, I understood that something was wrong. Then the court proceeded to discuss with him the videos that she did and how it kind of shaped the relationship and you know, what made and how David took everything. Salvatore then stated that he did not like it at all because he could feel David's intentions behind it all. He stated that David's part had become something that was beyond work. He also stated that David also went as far to tell Carol that she should not record on her phone at all to give her a more of sense of less mobile time. So I'm guess this is sensing that he wanted to just be the person to shoot for her, which gives kind of like he was trying to control a lot. 
David Fontana apologized to everyone in the courtroom before the hearing of his trial. He said, I want to apologize to everyone. I did a monstrous thing, horrible. I still don't explain myself and I don't understand how I could have done such a thing. I feel repentance and shame every day. It is right that I pay and from prison I want to do everything possible to atone. I hope one day you will all be able to forgive me. Carol Matesi's father stated during an interview or I'm not sure was it during the trial, you are the devil, you are a cursed killer. You destroyed the life of my angel, Carol. You are a murderer, a butcher. How dare you take the life and torture my beautiful daughter? Her face, her body. It will be a small justice, but hopefully David will spend the rest of his life in prison. She was laid to rest June 6, 2022, where her family and friends showed her enormous love. His sentencing is sometime in January 2023. They said mid, um, so I'm not sure did it already pass, but there was no any current news on the case. As usual, I will be offering my tips that may be helpful um, as someone who has been in the industry for about three years now. For starters, please be attentive and pay attention. In this case, her fans paying close attention to detail is honestly what got her body identified, which is honestly just so miraculous. To add to this point, advocating goes hand in hand. When you advocate for your favorite creator, just so much can happen, so much justice can happen just when you speak up and advocate. Also, please, please, please use safe words and also research the kink that you're into and how to develop a healthy relationship with your partner with that kink or honestly like they have classes they have so much now um with the bdsm community um and kink community there's so many forums threads um so you can be honestly educated education is honestly at our fingertips now with the internet and it's just best to be safe and updated and aware of what is going on in the community so you can have a safe and healthy sex life for s workers or non s workers or anybody it applies to learn to develop healthy boundaries learn to not overstep and when to walk away when you feel that a situation can drive you to be irrational and lastly i would honestly work with trusted individuals in the community to avoid hazy situations like this I know that they just stop. I know that they started off as a photographer and model um, fan. Well, I know that they started off as fan photographer and model that turned to romantic, and that they eventually decide to benefit from together. The industry, the industry has a lot of predators in the industry, out of the industry. There's just so many predatory people out here, and. Sadly, it's sometimes hard to decipher who's a predator and who's not until it's too late. I feel like he intentionally wanted to develop a relationship with her. A lot of her friends have stated that too, that he did this intentionally to get her comfortable, to eventually lead her to have sex with him, to just eventually lead to this dark road of where we're at now. Um, and I believe that sometimes when you just haze sex with professionalism, unless that's your job, it, it just confuses so much. And a lot of people don't know how to separate sex and work. Some people are not meant to do sex work. I don't like... <laughs> To me, when I saw this case, when I saw photographer, it made me think of my old photographer that I had. Um, a lot of women in, in S work, we go through this all the time where people, you know, message you, our fans, and they have businesses and they are credible. And then when you go to them, it's just a total different thing. I was working with a photographer for a while. He was shooting for me and 
it took like our last interaction for me to be like okay this is not okay the first time he was hinting sex and i'm like okay i'm a solo creator so i don't get why he's hinting sex weird and then the next time um he said something really really out of pocket and he didn't deliver my content he kept my content after i paid him and it, it just felt like i was used like he he has my content to just fiddle his beans or whatever um and like a month or so later a few times later after i had approached him about it he commented on my picture and was like i really wish i could have ate your you know what and i i still feel some type of way about you know photographers and i'm very like very private when it comes to that and i record my own stuff now because of that um or i have like a woman photographer or something not trying to say that women can't be predatory either but it, it just a lot of men purposely become photographers and record women in adult content to take advantage of them and it's just as for this case um, more is to come out as I said previously his sentencing was mid-January um, there's no information on that but it is coming up soon so in Italian law it states that in a special way could cause a case to go all the way to life in prison um, with it being premeditated and it being in a harmful way um, would lead this to be a special circumstance where he could face life. Researching this case, I barely found any information, um, but I'm not sure whether it's because it was in Italy, um, but some true crime YouTubers have covered this, which I suggest y'all check them out. I'll make sure to link the few that I've watched that did an amazing job covering the case. Truly, honestly, wholeheartedly think that he just wanted her all to himself. Like he just completely felt that she was his, which is so disgusting and vile. Um, and was like overly obsessed and it became too much. Unfortunately, I feel like she just couldn't get away with her being so sweet and nice. Just her thinking that his intentions were pure and it, and it wasn't. Carol, I truly hope that you are at peace and that you will receive justice. All right. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me with another SW in True Crime video. Make sure you like comment and hit that notification bell so you know when i'm posting next um yeah but let me know what case i should cover next comment your thoughts this case was really really just crazy really crazy i love y'all comments i appreciate y'all commenting it just keeps me so intrigued and and so ready to keep posting and to keep the conversation going i appreciate y'all so much i hope to see y'all have a great week and yeah.